Just to remind members that devices should be switched off or the tablet set to mute. Okay. Now we'll move into apologies. I don't have any notified apologies, Jim. Have you received any? Any apologies? No apologies. Uh, no apologies, okay. Has to say Gordon, Gordon and Paul will be. Aye, Gordon and Paul will be on a wee bit late, but they're, they're going to be here, so. Right, can we move quickly then to agenda item number two, which is the draft minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of December 2013, and these are at page five. Now, um, the, can I ask members if they have any queries, do they accept that the minutes are a true and accurate account of the meeting? Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Uh, move on then to chairperson's business, and this, these items are at page 14. <clears throat> now, there's a um, word from the Attorney General there. There's a colloquium on model rules for EU administrative procedures, and that's been held on Friday the 7th of February. Um, I'm not available to attend that one myself, um, uh, unless any other member wishes to attend that has a particular interest on good administration, content of rules for good administration using the EL1. Model Rules Project. Will there be a, will there be a report from it afterwards? Some sort of I'm not too sure. It seems to be a chat about rules, rules there, so that seems to be a bit of a chat session. So we'll duly note that then. Okay. Now, um, if we can move to the just one other item, the Scrap Metal Dealers Private Members Bill. The table today is an invite to the Chair and Members from Roy Bakes to a consultation on the Scrap Metal Dealers NI Private Members Bill in Room 30, Parliament Buildings at 12.30 to 1.30 on Monday the 20th of January. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, can members, anyone wishing to attend, just co uh, contact the committee office if they wish to. Okay, thank you. Right, we move to agenda item number four, which is normal briefing from uh, the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment on the DETI website and online presence. And papers for this item are included at page 17 and include an NI briefing paper, uh, NI Direct Style Guide. And with us here today is Wendy Johnson, the Director of Human Resources and Central Support uh, Division. You're very welcome indeed uh, to the committee today. Thank you for attending, and I'm sure members will have the odd comment here or there to make. Um, um, I believe are you just newly into the position. Yes, I'm a relatively So I hope you're committee. coming with some fresh and new ideas, um, probably for improvement, <laughs> I would suggest. But we'll come to that after. So uh, if you wish to make your, your opening statement there, please, and then we'll have a bit of interaction with members. Good morning, everyone. Mr Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for your words of introduction and welcome. Um, I hope the short background note that I sent up was, was useful. I have a few brief additional comments to make, and of course I will be happy to take any comments at the end. Um, can I say at the outset the committee's request was very timely. As you'll see from the papers, we had just launched uh, an actual review of the website. Um, you indicated uh, I'm, I'm a relative newcomer. Actually, after I'd been there a little while, the permanent secretary asked me to look at the website to see with a view to making it better to do improvements to it. So I did some background into the history of it and how it's managed, and it became clear that clearly the site is in need of um, really a root and branch review. Um, so I talked to the key staff in NI Direct. Clearly there are experts, and they have all the experience of, of managing websites. And I also wanted to make sure that we weren't going to do anything that would be cut across in any of the, the next wide initiatives. Um, following my research, then I identified one of my own staff who um, was looking for an opportunity. He has an information management background, but he has no project management background. So um, I've had him trained up in project management, and he's going to lead the, the project management part of the review. While my information management unit, um, so they're under my command, will be leading the project, clearly the information on the site belongs to all the individual business areas, and they're the people who will determine whether the information needs to stay there, should be archived on the site, or should be removed. And also I've asked them to look at if there's additional things we should be putting on the site. Um, the project is wide-ranging, as I've indicated there. It's going to be an audit, a cleanse, and actually a restyle of how we present the information on the website. It won't at this point be a, a complete redesign because of the, the potential for work to be done through the NI Direct uh, consolidation project. Uh, but the intention clearly is to improve it and simplify access for people coming to the site and to make sure that we have a, a management process for the, the web content that is fit for purpose going forward. 
Um, each of the heads of business areas have now nominated people to come, and we have a half-day workshop which will be run by our NI Direct colleagues um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, as I said, they have considerable experience in presentation and standards, and they will explain to the staff how to complete the audit. Um, it is a fairly methodical process, but it is thorough, and uh, it will be done in a relatively six months is a relatively short time scale because these people will be doing it on top of what essentially is their day job in terms of delivering policy and, and the other things they do. Um, I mean, Nix has made significant strides in the recent years in de delivering more information and customer service services online, and NI Direct is now well established, as you're aware. Um, it currently attracts 1.6 million visitors per month, and the daddy customer-facing services uh, that were suitable have already been transferred across, bar a very small number of residual services, um, which are now in a position to be migrated and will be done so at the earliest opportunity. It's maybe worth pointing out that these services are very, very low activity, and that's why they haven't moved yet. Um, they relate to an insolvency pay engine, a couple of e-forms, and some of the trading standards online complaints. Um, I mentioned in the background brief that Deputy has volunteered to be the pilot department for a forthcoming phase of development of NI Direct, which is still subject to business case approval. As I indicated, that will have the potential to provide all the core departments with the benefits of a common infrastructure and technical support, common content management systems and other common features, but it will also ensure that we have a consistently high standard of um, web information and web publishing <coughs> in the mix. But regardless of that, the work that we're doing actually is an essential precursor to any work we do on the website. We do need to cleanse the information that's there and make sure it's in a style that's, that's uh, easily accessible and readable. Um, for your own background, you might be interested to know that our um, access to our website has been steadily growing since 2009. In 2009, we had about 112,000 hits on the website. Uh, it's gone up to 164 last year, 164,000 last year. That's really a very quick gallop through. Um, mm -hmm. If there's anything you would like to ask me, clearly if I don't have the information with me today, I'll, uh, I'll happily come back to you. Just, just a few comments, and I'm glad you're coming to this with a fresh set of eyes. Just from cursory glance at the website, it simply doesn't give the impression of being a contemporary website. I'm looking here at this reference to Grant Raising 2020, it's very contemporary, but the date, 14th of February 2013, April 2013, 7th of November 2012, just from initial glance, it does not give the impression of a website it that is, is not a modern being website updated. in any definition of that. And it was created in 2002 and it does need considerable work. No, but it seems that it gives the impression that nobody's actually working on it in a contemporary way, updating it, and even, even to change that impression, that gives the impression of something that has been put up the last time something was added to it. It gives the impression now was April 2013. That's what it gives the impression of. On that front page, that probably that is the last page. thing. Yes. And that's what most people go into. Yeah. And they'll take one look at that and they'll say, nobody's updating this. No, I mean, I've looked at all the other departmental um, websites, so I will not disagree with you in any shape or form. And the one or two other things just that we, we have discovered. I attended an event on um, Tuesday for Farm Safety. Now, see, there's a link through to Health and Safety. Health, the, the HSE the NI, website, yeah. but those are purely links on the right hand side. I would have thought, given the responsibilities of the department, for example, for health and safety, for there's a couple of other for business startups, trading standards, and consumer protection, particularly in this age, that those would have been, anyways, more or less jumping out the page. I think at the moment they're in, they're either in tabs across the front or in links to the website. Aye, and they're, they're just not, it is. It's not a good website no. by any means, either in terms of giving the impression of one that's regularly updated or one that's clued in with what issues, the contemporary issues are, and the responsibilities of the department. So um, I take it you're going to be coming back to us with something that reflects modern 21st century. If you want a sneak preview, if you go into the cons if you're live on there, if you go into the, mm -hmm. the top line on the front page, talks about consultations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've done Any a little consultations. Is that the yes, one? if you go into that, um, we've done a little bit of work to produce it in the sort of the restyled version. Do you see what it looks yeah. like? So you will now get the and live. Now, um, if you're on the very under... front page, you get press releases just under the the tabs that go across the front. Oh, it's under press releases, is it? No, press releases is a title, is a link, and just below that, it's consultations is a link. News releases. 
yeah. new releases, and just below that it says consultations. If you go into the consultations now. No, this is the live website they're looking well, at. We've got it here, but it's this not. This is a, uh, a running joke. <laughs> it's not. I can't. All I've got is draft equality impact assessment, consultation on future consumer representation, and then arrangement for Northern Ireland. At Daddy Home. Yes, yes it's, on the, it's on the home page. And then there's Daddy in the middle of the thing. This is Daddy News release, and then under that it says Daddy Consultations. Click on that. And if you Daddy click on that link. We've restyled the consultations so that you just get the live consultations, and we've. It was impossible to find them. Hmm? It was impossible to find a consultation on that website. Yeah, no, I mean that's what we're. That's the sort of style we will have, so it will be much, much clearer and easier to navigate. All right, so you could maybe add a wee bit of excitement to it as well. It's not the most, you know. Oh, I think um, when I looked, there were two photographs on the entire website. No, it's not. Yep. No, it's, it's. There's only one of them with the minister. <laughs> Gives the impression of just a document. It's just it is a very old fashioned you know? it is a very old fashioned website. That's um, so That's why I'm, I'm using NI Direct um, and their well skills and expertise to make sure we bring it up to Well it is so much for local consumers, but people from overseas dipping into that they'll not be really that impressed by it, you know. So anyway, you know all that. Yeah. We're looking to you now for solutions. So, uh, when are you going to be coming back to us then? Well, the the cleanse and audit has to be completed by July this year. So, it'll hopefully be probably your new session going forward, September. Pardon? on when? Probably your new session, September, October. If you want me to come back. Seriously, it's taking them that long. Well, there's an awful. Um, maybe I'll give you some other stats just to put it into context. Great to be um, calling the private sector to do this one. Get them a grant. Eh? Well, the people who own the information are the ones who have to make the decisions. Um, what we need to do is look at the page names. We need to look at the URLs. The content owner then has to be identified. We have to make sure that they're um, empowered to make regular review of it and sign off. We by have content to owners. By that, do you mean the likes of Consumer Council, the likes of the actual, the actual business areas? Well, con the Consumer Council, the NDPBs have their own websites, which have all been reviewed in the last couple of years. What we're talking about is the departmental staff who will actually <coughs> own the various. If you look at the website, it gives you the business areas across the top. Each of those business areas at present right. has somebody who's completely responsible. Well, sorry, the business area is completely responsible for updating and managing the website. Part of the project is actually to put in place a modern, up to date management structure and governance of it. So, something along the lines of a, an editorial board with a, a webmaster to make sure that things are driven and kept up to date. Very good. Well, forgive me for asking, but does the department not have press officers? who should be enabled and empowered to do this sort of stuff? At the moment, it doesn't fall within the responsibility of the press officers. It's still in the yes. old... <laughs> at the moment, it's in the old process of being managed by the individual business areas. That's incredible. So in this day and age, the corporate press body of the department does not have responsibility for... Not as we speak, no. <laughs> Morning. I don't know. <laughs> We're kind of back to the donkey and cart approach here, so... No, it is very old-fashioned, and at the moment I don't actually have a principal information officer in the department. When I get a new one, I think they will find they have different responsibilities than they currently have. Oh, dear. Not good. So, um, you're really starting from basic here? Yes, I want to do a written branch review of it and make sure we get it up to standard and then that we keep it that way going forward. Here. Anyway, um, the, the information is all there. It's just not well presented, and it's not easy to find. Aye. It's not been updated, but anyway, sorry, uh, Phil. Thanks, Patsy, and Wendy, thanks for coming, and glad to see that you're on board. Um, you say you need to do a root and branch review of the website, but you've accepted the website's a load of crap. <laughs> why, do you, why do you need to do a review? I just accept it needs sort of. Oh, sorry, review's maybe the wrong word. What we need to do is drill into it and make sure that the right information is there that it's kept up to date, mm. and also if there's other information that should be there, that we get it on there. But why does it take 10 months or 8 months to put up a new style website? You know, if you, were, if you were opening a business, you could make a website in three days. I've made better websites than that. We can't just scrap what's there, so we have to look at what's there and bring it up to standard. There's no point in redoing the website and putting the stuff on in the same format that it's there, because it's very old-fashioned. But it doesn't take 8 months. No, but the individuals who are doing this, we don't have staff sitting around who can do this full time. They will be doing it while they're doing their normal policy development and the other things that they do within the department. But people that are doing policy development shouldn't be updating a website. 
But they're the owners of the content on it, Phil. They might be the owners of the content, but they can email it to somebody that's responsible for the website who copies and pastes it in the proper format. I, I, I find They're not actually the owners of the content, the department would be. Well, the business areas are, know, have the knowledge to know what mm -hmm. should be there, whether it's up to date or not, and also how it should be kept up to date. But ignore the actual content. The state and style of the website needs to be sorted out. Yes, and it will be. But That's what that we're going can, to that can be done without forward. waiting for eight months for individual business units to tell you that the content's all right. But the audit it's not a big job to add a new page onto a website, to delete the text of it, add new text and upload and delete photos. That's not the big problem. The big problem is the layout of the website. It's impossible to find something on it. But that is well, the, I mean, the information is there. The, lay, the layout is old-fashioned, but it, it is still segmented in terms of which business area looks after it. But it's very hard to find things. You know, your home page is a joke. Yeah, well, the, the home page is very old-fashioned. Yeah, but uh, wait in eight months until you get information on each fr from each of the individual business units to sort that out. It's not going. Well, to it'll sort be done going. It's an integrated process, so it will be going forward like we've done on the consultation. But I mean, that's that's something I got one of my staff to physically do. But, but they do all have other work to do. So it is about doing it in a managed way, doing it in a way that is recorded, and also we have to we have to comply with our own. Um, I can't remember the words. Apologies. Um, with our own retention and disposal schedules. We can't just take something off and delete it. We have to make sure it's somewhere else as well. And is, is there not a role for EIS to take charge of this here? Because well, it is, a, they, they probably communicate more with people through their website than they do with the hundreds of press releases they issue on a monthly basis. Yes. I mean, well, it's the department's information, it's the department's website. It doesn't rest with EIS yeah. or, or NI Direct, but I'm using their skills and know how and, and having them involved in the project. But you're saying that Daddy or the pilot department for sorting out websites? No, no. Daddy will be the pilot department to go on if the project goes ahead in terms of the consolidation of the websites. Elaborate on that a bit for me, will you? At the moment, we've, we've done an awful lot of work across the NICS and putting the customer facing stuff onto NI Direct. Yeah. And you've seen that it's all huh. very modern mm -hmm. and all the rest. Um, the next phase is looking at moving the 12 NI departments onto the actual network. Okay. Now, you, it'll still be a link to the department, but it will be up front on, I mean, you can still press and get through from NI Direct clearly into individual departments. Mm -hmm. It's putting it onto the platform and bringing a standardisation. Um, they'll still be fair, they'll still be unique and there'll still be business things that relate to the departments, but it means if a member of the public goes in and wants to look at the corporate stuff of a department, so their operating plans, the ministerial portfolio, whatever, you will go onto a website for DETI, for DARD, for DRD, and you will be able to navigate the same way into the same information. So what we're doing at the moment is getting our system up to spec, so making sure the information is correct. And then if that project goes ahead, we will be the first one to go onto the new format. So there's no point in us completely redesigning our website <coughs> in advance of all that if it's going to be done, and we will use the NI Direct services. So who's to going do to decide that. if it goes ahead or not? It's, it's a next wide project that's been taken forward by uh, DFP and the NI Direct. And when did it start? Board. They're waiting for the business case at the moment. A business case to update a website? No, they're waiting for the business case to do the full consolidation because that moves everything onto the NI Direct website and brings together all the support for it. Um, in terms of other departments, what are they doing? Well, as I said, uh, having looked at the other departments, most of them are much more modern yes. and, and uh, easily accessible. And that's where we want Wouldn't to get agree. to. Uh, most of them. They're, you go on to they're, the, the they're all fairly website. unique. Oh, hold on a wee minute later. Just they, they are all fairly unique. And, and you, you do, you, unless you're in them all the time, they're, they're not necessarily wonderful <coughs> to navigate. But some of them are much improved compared, well, sorry, most of them are much improved right. compared to the Eddie one. The Eddie mm. one. Yes. But is the fact that they have a responsibility for an innovation strategy for telecoms, should they really not be doing much more to present a, an up-to-date uh, customer-facing website? We will do it, but we have to do it in terms of making sure it's value for money and it's efficient and effective on top of everything else we're doing. I, I, you won't get any it, disagreement with me. How does it cost money? Because we have to, the resource that's doing it isn't doing something else. It is as simple as that. Sorry, can you explain that, Wendy? The resource that's doing it isn't doing something. What, what do you mean by that? Well, because it's the individual business areas who own the information and they're the ones who will come and decide what stays on, what comes yes. off, or what needs to go on extra. It'll be people who, their normal day job is doing legislation, doing 
yes. policy development. So, you know, it's the same resource. There are only 460 people in the department. So, I appreciate that, but surely there is a corporate management meeting where these individual heads of department come together. And to my mind, anyway, corporate management should be those individual heads coming together and the person with charge of corporate uh, promotions and aid, uh, information and, and, and whatever it is, computer development should be sitting in the back of the room collating all this stuff or at the table, whatever way they do it. And going forward, that's the type of system we will have, but we need to sort out the stuff that's currently on yes. the website. And that's what we're going to do. So essentially it's a management issue? Yeah. I mean, if the management had changed earlier, we may not be where we are now, but we hate to say the phrase, but we are where we are. Welcome to the 21st century management then at Diddy. So, um, okay, Phil, will you finish there? Not really, no. <laughs> Is there any reason no, uh, just th this couldn't be done in Fortnite? Because we need to use the resource that's in the business areas. My, my staff do not know whether the information is current, it's up to date. I mean, because something has a date on it that's 20, 2012 or 2010 yes. doesn't mean it's not mm. the current information. I know. My individual staff won't know that, so the business areas are going to do it. It's quicker the business area is doing it than getting a third party to do it. Sorry, uh, sorry if you forgive me for asking, should those people who put that up not have been checking to see if that was contemporary as a matter of fact and as a matter of course and a matter of good yeah, management. And, and anyway. they will know, so it's easier for them to do it than for us to start trying to ask people. No, but, is no, that but, up sorry, to you're, you're picking me up wrong. If stuff had been put up on the website, which was still on the website, which was valid, which was good, and which was grand and contemporary, that's grand. But if somebody had slapped it up there in November 2012 as one of the things was, and it is no longer proper advice, proper guidance, out of date. I'm not saying that. Maybe been amended or adapted. I'm not saying then. that's what's happening. I'm saying I don't Aye. know that, but I need to ask the business you need areas to check. because I want to make I, sure I would, we get it right. I would have presumed that that is happening. That might be a wrong presumption. Yeah, and I could, I could make that presumption, but if, I want to make sure. If it isn't happening, then you have a bigger problem. Yeah. So. But I won't know until I get the, the project yes. team. Okay. Running and the training done. Okay. One more question, Butler. Sure. Go ahead. Have, no. Has the department approached EIS to try and second somebody over the department to try and take a lead in this issue to get it sorted out? Is that something you could do? Well, I think EIS are somewhat down on staff at the moment as well. There have been a number of promotions have gone out of it to, to various places, and um, but, I mean, I'm, I'm confident this project will do it, <coughs> and it will be done. And I'm methodical and Can correct. Can you keep us right. updated? Yes, no, I'm happy to keep you updated. Maybe get 20 or 30 from OFM, DFM or something like that. Uh, Jim Honest will be delighted to hear that EIS is short staff. So, can we come over? Yep. Yeah. Um, Mr Douglas, Sammy. Thank you, Chair. And thanks for coming along, Wendy. Um, and, and the last thing I want to do is shoot a message. You know, you're here to try <laughs> and get a bit of uh, direction from us. Um, I would use the website, you know, um, uh, quite often in terms of social economy, and Fast Northern Ireland or the Northern Ireland Tourist Board. One thing we'd say about it, and in a positive way, there's a lot of good information on it. Yeah. But the, the you're absolutely right. The, the home page is just crammed with stuff. It's trying to get. It doesn't encourage you to come back. Get the whole thing, thing through it. And there are just a couple of uh, points I would make. And certainly, I'm no expert, and I don't think any of us are. So um, to take this as. Maybe as, I could say, in terms of feedback, there is actually a feedback section on it. Yes, on the consultation. And, and since 2002, we've had two bits of feedback. <laughs> so you know, I'm happy to take feedback, and yeah. if there's anything that certainly of any I'll of tell the. Tell you how well the web page is working, then. Well, either <laughs> that or everybody's boringly satisfied with it. They from civil um, service <coughs> working there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if, if the committee have any comments they want to make, I mean, I'm more than happy to make well, sure. I, they're I have a couple of board. comments. So, yes, um, one ahead. of the things I'd say is that some prints very small yeah. for for elderly people or people with. Uh, the selfie that you wear glasses. I'm not saying you have to have it 16 or 18, but uh, some of it's very small. And you're obviously right, um, there's, it needs photographs or a video or something. It doesn't have you. It's quite um, boring at the moment. The other thing um, I would say as well is that when I look at it, if I was an um, inward investor or a business person coming come to it, um, where, where would you start? Where's that? Yeah. And I suppose that the biggest question is who is that actually aimed at? And that's one of your problems because it's aimed at people like us, investors, overseas, a whole range of people. Well, our, our departmental website is essentially the corporate information and the policy information. The customer facing, if you want, is predominantly, of course, in, in Eddie done by the NDPBs. Yes. Um, and having gone through their websites myself, I know they're much, much 
much different from uh, the core one. Yeah. And the other thing as well, I'm sending things to the, and I'm not sure why it was should have some, but I think we should, the Daddy Committee as such, if people wanted to find out okay. the Daddy Committee. That's useful, thank so, you. What we do and what our role is. So, uh, best wishes with it, uh, uh, anyway, Wendy, and uh, we look forward to... It will keep me busy, I suspect, <coughs> as well as the other things. That's good, OK. Um, I have... OK, Mr McLaughlin, Mitchell. Uh, yeah, a couple of uh, the observations we're going to make have already been dealt with, so we'll just move on. The strategic perspective, you know, right across all of the departments uh, in terms of uh, disseminating kind of corporate information or whatever, they all have the same function, intention and uh, requirement. Uh, the background is, of course, that... Um, you know, we, as we move towards the end of this mandate, uh, there's also a commitment on the programme for government to uh, review the, uh, the structure of the executive and the assembly and possibly the numbers of departments and whatever. And I'm not in danger of, of doing this work and then finding that I have to do it all over again. I think if we get it onto a modern platform, it'll be that much easier to actually redo. I mean, ICT has moved on significantly. The, the way we have the shared service centres for staffing, etc., it means that we'll be able to do those changes so much easier than when we did them back in 1999. I think I still have some scars from that particular process when we split the departments. Um, but the ICT will make it that much easier to revamp them. And if we do have a consistent approach, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not DFP or, or OFM to AFM. If we do have a consistent approach in smaller numbers, having common ICT structures and, and platforms will make it that much easier to, to put them together. And if we've got it on a, on a basis where you have all the common corporate information, it will be about amalgamating them rather than redoing everything. So, I mean, that's my personal view rather than uh, any yeah, insight. You know that uh, Simon Hamilton, and, and he's, uh, you know, he's new in the post, but he has established the, uh, the Public Sector Reform Division. Uh, that's going to have implications as well for the, uh, the use of information technology and the deployment of it. Uh, is that part of your, uh, or, you know, is that included in the overview of the remit that you have, or is that happening in the background? That, that's a DFP process. I, I yeah. don't want to take responsibility for that. Thank you. No, no, I'm not asking you to take responsibility for it. But it no, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not aware of the reform. Uh, the new reform division yeah. being anything in terms of websites or, or ICT? But, well, I would suggest respectfully, you know, that it does have to be taken into consideration, or else, you know, we'll have perhaps uh, duplication of, or replication well, of effort. I would assume that they're working with NI Direct, which sits within DFP. So, if there were central mm. initiatives being done by DFP, that would be. Yeah, no, you should, and I would assume that as well. But if you don't know about it, then well, I'm, I'm a bit worried that no, no, uh, our information isn't. Like NI Direct are my experts, so mm, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm depending on NI Direct. And then just uh, a, a, an observation uh, in terms of what is, in fact, a, 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 a quite enormous task of transposing or, or transporting information from one uh, system into another. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the owners, as you describe them, should they not simply have the responsibility to give you an assurance that, uh, that the information that they have on the page at the present time is up to date and uh, is suitable for transporting? So you just go ahead and do it. Well, uh, I think passing it back to them just invites all sorts of delays and kinks. And I don't have the resource to, to take that all on. Um, I have to confess I have eight staff in my ICT unit and one of those is an ICT apprentice. So I have to work within the resources that are within the department. I would love to be able to devote resource overheads to, to doing it, but I have to manage it and I have to follow value for money yeah, and all that we I We are planning our way into this project, and of course it's a necessary project. I think that's already been demonstrated by your own comments on, on the observations of colleagues here. Uh, I mean, surely in terms of planning how we're going to kind of move from the old to the new, uh, we've looked at the various options, and I would have thought that just simply you know, allocating to the owners the editorial responsibility for saying that this is the information that we require to be on the new page. 
then you know what you're doing is centralising it. The, uh, yeah, the, the but we, we still we still have to do the audit, and, and this is this is the best practice which NI Direct have, have said. I'm oh, sorry, you're not doing the audit. You've said that. You sorry, don't I'm know. Trying, sorry, that no. it was the Royal Way. It was the department. Um, <laughs> but we still, if you look at the website, we don't even have basic information in terms of what the size of the files are. If somebody wants to download some of some of our files, they won't know whether they're downloading volumes and volumes and volumes or one page in essence unless they open it up and go through it. So there's an awful lot of detailed work that needs to be done to make sure we do actually get it right. And that's the most important thing. Time. And six months is not that long a period of time. Okay. Not whenever we're doing it within the resources that we currently have. Can maybe just suggest, I'm looking here, the European Support Unit needs to be a wee bit more vigorous and active. Um, and maybe should be aware that we're into 2014 now as well. I don't even know if they exist, the European Support Unit. Yes, but they're still there. According to this here, they're not very contemporary. So, um, Mr. Anderson, Sydney. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Wendy, for your coming along this morning and letting us have a, an insight to what you intend to do. Uh, not being a, a wizard in any one way with this modern technology, I'm sure you've noted that. Uh, but a couple of points. Uh, We've heard some comments uh, in the way that the, the, the site is being described this morning, so I'll not uh, comment on that. Uh, but there's been 112,000 hits you talked about. It's now 164,000. <coughs> so is there something right about it that you're getting all those hits? Or is these hits coming in, they're not getting the information that they're looking for? Is there a built-in, I say, I'm not knowledgeable in this way, but uh, are there built-in mechanisms to, for those people who are dissatisfied to say, look, maybe that yep. that's something yes. we should be we, doing. We have that feedback. It's up on the top right hand side, and as I said, we've only so had two since two thousand. Is, is that there presently? It's there. Yes. So, what, what are they saying? We're not getting any feedback. <laughs> that's our problem. You're not getting the feedback. <laughs> no. But you're getting all these hits, 164,000 yep, um, hits. I mean, we do get some, we, we're on a, a fairly old system, but we get some metrics. So the four areas that actually get the highest number of hits are the ones you would probably expect. So it is around the, um, the statistics and research section that's on there, mm -hmm. um, insolvency service. Um, sadly, that's been a, a growing area because of the current financial climate. Um, trading standards is also a, a high hitter. And I'm trying to remember what the fourth one is, um, energy. We have and we have energy wise, etc. Yeah. on NI yes. Direct. What about consultations? Uh, not overly, no. Could I just? Uh, Those Sydney, are the top four. If I could, Sydney, just yes, on that, that, this is done. There's a guy who updates his own website for, for better and worse, but what, what we can do is, and I presume the you're, you're doing this, so don't leave it to me, you know. <laughs> um, you can drill down and see, you might have a hundred and something thousand hits, but you can drill down and see. Are those hits just coming onto the front page away? Yeah. Or are they going into some of the links? Or are they going into documents or consultations, whatever it might be? Yeah. So I presume somebody uh, does that regularly. The system we're on doesn't have very good metrics. That's the other difficulty with it. When we move across to the NI Direct platform, they will have considerable management information and analytics. To be honest with you, that is very basic stuff. That you know, I mean, that's why I can tell you, we know, yeah. we know which parts of the website people are going into. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that's basic stats. I'm, whether I can get you even more detailed than that, I, I'm happy to come back yes. to you. Yes, yeah, that, that's that's the ahead. point I was coming to, like 164,000 hits, but are the people getting the information that they're looking for? We don't know. No. Well, we're not getting the feedback that that's they're not. Yeah. Well, you got two pieces of feedback. What did they say? <coughs> um, they, they, were, they were people who were looking for information oh, no. that uh, we then provided to them. That's why that's right. one of the things I've asked them to do is look Five at gaps. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, they, but they're, they're old inquiries. I mean, any feedback I get, I'm happy to take on board. Mm. And just fine, fine. Uh, you, you touched on all the department's websites and all that. Have you an opinion on how that would compare with, with you, where you want to be? Well, we, if, we, if the consolidation project goes ahead, we will be the, the forerunner of all of them. Yeah, better than yeah. the, the well, best of the best? Yes. <laughs> OK, well, anyway, We, we can you. aspire. OK. All right. Thank you, Chair. And then, Mr. McKinney, just, just briefly, Chair, I think what we're looking at here really are two two different issues. One is is the issue around content and process, and the other is around website design. And I would suggest that that the content process argument shouldn't be allowed to delay the design argument uh, or design process. And um, also, um, are you future proofing 
uh, your web presence because you know, I access most of my stuff now on this little device. Yeah. And is there a Detty app? It looks to me like you're now no, trying to put... No, there is no Detty app. Well, I would suggest that a lot of the work that you're doing now uh, will very quickly be outdated as you move to app presence. Yeah. So I would just uh, encourage you to think... That's why we're so keen to use the expertise of NI Direct, because we want to stay ahead yes. of the game. And they are our experts. Uh, or your counterparts, possibly in the tourist board, who work with apps and... Well, that's right. You know, there's a real danger that you're going to start. You're doing a lot of work here to catch up. Right. You'll find yourself behind. Well, the, the hope is that we do a lot of work and we get ourselves ahead and stay ahead because yeah. we're yeah. Yeah. using the NI Direct skills and expertise. OK. Um, anyone else? That's it. On to Phil. Faye, Phil uh, have you had any discussions with Log on NI about this? <clears throat> no. How come? I have, nobody has mentioned Log on NI to me, Phil, so I will... Pursue that okay. as I go back. Do you know what Logon NI does? No, I have well, to confess. It's maybe an idea if you could it for the tune of three point eight five million pound by Daddy to help businesses set up a website. Right. Okay. So maybe they'll give you some of it back, or. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I would hope NI director already uh, making sure they have the expertise ahead of Logon and I, but I will certainly go back and have a look. Thank you. All right. Uh, Is that one else? Logan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> log on. You maybe get a job out of it, Phil. I'm, I do it for nothing to sort of. I don't. Wouldn't, it only take a fortnight. Yeah. Not worth it. Update your website. Could do a patch. I know. I know. You wouldn't let him go, though, all right, Lee. I know, uh, but uh, seriously, this is not... As I listen to you and I hear the convoluted processes of the civil service taken over, yeah, absolutely. I, I say to myself, this is stuff that private sector would have done. Well, the private sector wouldn't have a website like that. What private sector would have done in less than a month? Well, I can assure you we're using the oh. best practice that NI Direct have used to create NI Direct, so we're mm -hmm. not putting in bureaucracy for the sake of it. We're, it's a very light touch, actually, compared to what NI Direct are doing. We're just doing the basics and making sure we've done it properly, mm -hmm. and people can do it, then do what the other urgent priorities are in their desk, and come back without losing place and make sure it's done thoroughly. Just and if there are priorities elsewhere, um, will you be, are you likely to be considering Bring in the private sector and they'll do it for you. No, we will do it in house and we will have it done in the time scale that we're, we've said we will do it in. But do you have any website designers in house to do it for you? Uh, not within DETI, no. Well, where are they? They're mostly in the DFP side. We, we do, we do um, most of our uh, systems we buy from the private sector, yes. the likes of BABS, which yes. supports yeah. insolvency service. Yeah. So we buy in those types of things. But you've told Mitchell that you're not talking to DFP. Mm -hmm. Well, we're working, you know, we are working with DFP, and I direct as DFP. Right, They're right. the experts in terms of websites and things. And, and given that Daddy are taking the lead on doing this thing here, could somebody from DFP not simply transfer over to Daddy to sort out your website first, and then simply roll that out with every other government We, we can't do that in advance of the consolidation project. It still has to be the business case for that. Right. OK. There's also no point in us redesigning the website and then them introducing the new design for, the, for all the departments as part of the consolidation project of DFP. Because we would be then putting, and we'd be. So where is Daddy taking the lead on it? No, we're the pilot You're department for it to be introduced. <laughs> You're the pilot, but you can't do anything until somebody else does something. No, we have volunteered to be the pilot for it. We have volunteered to be the pilot for it. Right, you've volunteered to be the pilot for so this. So what we're doing now, and we would be doing it regardless of that, <clears> is we still have to do that audit, cleansing, and restyle because the system. The way it's presented at the moment is appalling, but we're not doing a full redesign. It's mm -hmm. a restyle. The redesign will be done as part of that consolidation project, so that it's going to be the same design across all 12 departments. So, uh, in conclusion, then, when will you have something tangible to show us? That's, well, once we've had the training session in a couple of weeks, I will then have a clear view as to when we will start to see the stuff uh, appearing. I, but I'm, it should I'm, all I'm be done. Of, it should I'm all be done within that six months. Right, so you'll be back to us then with something tangible and exciting to show us here. Yes. Who's the training session for? The training session is for the, the business owners. On what? The business areas. How to do the audit and also to, to show them how the style right. guide actually applies to... You know, this is what Daddy has at the minute. This is what it will look like. So a training session for... It's only, it's only a short half ...for day. them to figure out how to look on the website to see whether the stuff they've put on it is up to date or not. Well, they're not IT literate. They don't un some of them don't understand URLs. I mean, not everybody is IT literate. 
They know the information. Why are they being charged with putting stuff on an internet website? That's why we're training them up and making sure they understand Sorry, just exactly. Just to get it absolutely clear. <clears throat> so the purpose of this process that you're doing with this session that you're having with them, is this a training or is it an audit session? It's a training session so that they carry out the audit correctly and they all do it the same way. Right. And it's for consistency. The audit is to establish the range of stuff that they put up if the existing stuff that they have up is contemporary, which probably the European unit needs to look at very quickly, doesn't need to be rocket science to do that. You don't need somebody with a clipboard to do that either. Uh, all they need to be is to www and go into the, the website. Um, I presume some of this stuff can be done very, very quickly. Yes, I mean, some of it will be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. If you want, I'll send you up. They're going to complete effectively a template. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you up a sample of the template and show that. you what they're going to analyse. Okay. All right. And then the, the outcomes and results of that too. Right. Okay, and uh, you'll be back in touch with us whenever you have something exciting to show us here. Yeah, certainly. That's grand then. Thanks very much for your time and I wish you well in your venture. Uh, when the, obviously you're in the deep end there, so <laughs> baptism by fire, you may be doing it elsewhere. Need to keep busy. Right. Good. Thank you very Thank much. You now. Thank, Thank you now. Thank you. Okay, now... Um, we we'll move on then to agenda item number five, which is a briefing from Assembly Research on Northern Ireland sub-regional -region economic data. Um, we have the details of this at page 23, and with the committee today is Aidan Stennett, the research officer, and you're very, very welcome indeed to be with us, uh, Aidan, and I see you have you've done quite a bit of work here about data how it's been compiled, local government, district, parliamentary constituency areas, and even something that I wasn't aware of myself, these um, these regions that they've compiled of. And Mitchell, you'll be glad to, to learn that there is over in the north rather than the west or the northwest. So, um, so that, that's uh, interesting too. Probably complicates things that bit more. But anyway, Aidan, if, if you could go ahead with, with uh, a bit of an overview, it, and then we'll take a Q&A from members, please. Okay, thanks, Chair. Um, the, the paper that's in front of you today uh, was born out of a, a presentation uh, the committee received on the, the border economy, which drew uh, attention to the issue of sub-regional data and pointing out gaps. Um, so the purpose of the paper was to assess the availability of the sub-regional data in Northern Ireland um, and to identify what gaps there are. There are, there is some analysis in the paper the, by way of examples of what you can do with the data, but the real focus was on what's publicly available and, and what isn't. Um, the data that was located was divided into three groupings, um, business and the economy, the labour market and education, and household and personal finances. And in the first in instance, um, we saw data at parliamentary constituency level. Um, however, as you point out, Chair, it's not all available at that level, so, uh, which creates certain problems when you're trying to compare the data as a, as a whole. Um, okay, so turning to the data uh, on the business and the economy, the table one on page two of the paper summarises the data sets that were located. And the corresponding figures for this uh, can be found in appendix one. From the data, it's possible to compare the business demography of each local government. We can use to rank local government districts by the number of businesses, business turnover, rates of business births and business deaths, etc. Um, this data has a few shortcomings. Uh, it's reliant on VAT and PAE registration, so businesses that fall out these thresholds are not captured. Um, as such, you can say that it's, uh, it provides an indicative, if, if incomplete, picture. A range of data on invest and I performance is also included. This is uh, available at parliamentary constituency area level and allows for a comparison of things like uh, invest and I assistance, jobs promoted, uh, the, the jobs promoted above the median wage, and so forth. This data is sourced from a, an answer to an assembly question. Um, invest and I data is also available from other sources at uh, local government level, and this is available over a number of years. Uh, there was a little difficulty uh, in locating data on jobs promoted at sub-regional level uh, over a period of time. Uh, the, the data on um, sub-regional GVA is, is also available, but at the, the NOS3 level, and these are the divisions that you mentioned, Chair, this, they, they come from uh, European Union. 
mm -hmm. um, divisions of, of Europe. Uh, overall, with the business and economy data, there are issues of, with uh, comparability. Uh, that's because it's not possible to locate all data sets at the same level. And as such, whilst analysis of individual indicators is possible, uh, analysing it in its totality it becomes more difficult. Uh, a number of other sub-regional data sets in the business and economy area were sought, uh, but could not be located. These are outlined on page 17 of the paper and include areas such as business R&D expenditure, export and import data and labour productivity. Uh, as is the case with the data on business and economy, a, a wide range of data on the labour market, education and benefits uh, is available. These are outlined on table 2 on, on page 7. Uh, again, this allows for a comparison of sub-regional geographical areas uh, across a number of measures. It is possible, for example, to compare Northern Ireland's sub-regional performance in areas such as the labour market, uh, benefits, take up uh, education needs and skill skill gaps. Uh, some examples of this are included in the Statistical Annex Appendix 2. Um, again, there's some shortcomings in the data. The exclusion of sections of the agriculture sec section, sector and the self-employed persons in the census of employment data is one example, and another being the, the limited sample size for, for NEETS data. Uh, in this area, uh, there were a greater number of data sets available at the parliamentary constituency level uh, than in the previous business and economy grouping. So it makes uh, the cross indicator analysis uh, easier. Uh, not all data was available, however, uh, and some data sets, not all, all data was available at this level, um, and some data sets were only available for unique ge geographical groupings. That's the, the skills data, which is, uh, corresponds to work development forums. Uh, data which further breaks down public sector jobs into local authorities, civil <coughs> service, uh, etc., was also sought <coughs> for inclusion but, but could not be located. Um, and then, on the housing of personal finance uh, data, a similar picture emerges. That is, uh, a broad range of data is available on individual indicators, enabling specific, specific sub-regional comparisons to be carried out. Uh, comparisons can be made in such areas as income and social grade and housing and households. The range of data located is found in Table 3 on page 13, and the examples of the data in use are in Appendix 3. Uh, again, the fact that they're not on the same geographical level consistent, consistently, consistently uh, ensures that broader uh, cars comparisons are, are problematic uh, and no additional uh, data sets were sought in this, this group. The final section of the paper includes some additional information. The first part briefly looks at the UK Competitive Index, which is compiled by the University of Cardiff. In this index, Northern Ireland is included uh, as a region, but uh, Sub-regionally, uh, it is excluded, and that is due to a lack of compatible data. Inclusion in the index would enable Northern Ireland's localities to be compared with each other, um, with localities in uh, Great Britain across a number of indicators concurrently. And finally, the paper concludes with a comment from Dr John Bradley, whose, whose briefing uh, led, to, led to this paper being commissioned by the committee. Um, uh, amongst his comments, uh, Dr. Bradley stated that the, the sub-regional data situation, situation would be difficult to improve in the absence of considerable work on the national data situation, that is the situation for Northern Ireland uh, as a whole. So that, that's all I wanted to say. I'm happy for any questions. Hey, thanks very much for the for, uh, body of work here, Aidan. Uh, members wishing to ask a few questions. <coughs> Thank you, thank you, Chair, and um, thanks for your <coughs> research, your in-depth research. So, do you agree with uh, John Bradley, ultimately? I wouldn't have uh, the expertise to, to, to state whether he's, he's clever. Um, there's, there's lots of data there, uh, from what I can see, but it depends whether it's sufficient for a specific purpose just depends on that purpose. So there's a lot of questions that could be answered, but 
there are still gaps there, uh, that leads to will there be certain questions that will be unanswerable based on what's, what's yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, this is an interesting exercise in itself because uh, what we're pointing out is uh, the extent to which there's error or absence of information. That's not a calculable thing necessarily because we don't have the processes or information to calculate that um, there the were an error. But as you've gone through it, is there a case here for putting in more processes to try and establish, for example, the very small businesses uh, that fall below VAT and PAYE? We just don't know now the size of those, the, the extent of those at all, or, or where they're based. From the data that I could locate in, in the public domain, uh, no, I, I'm not sure if the department captures them another way. Um, it, there, I, I think there's lots of stuff in this that could lead to, to follow up to, to explore. <laughs> Well, that's the point that I'm trying to get to, is there, is there merit in, 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 in pursuing this further to get that further, bigger picture? But for example, as well, the census doesn't include self-employed uh, uh, at some level. Uh, I think your information refers to. And NEATS information is very limited. The NEATS information, uh, it's because of the sample size. Yeah. Um, it's, it's taken from the... The, the, the labour force survey. That's so what your what your 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 document is saying? Yes, there's lots of information out there. Um, I suppose in my mind, I'm thinking that information presents a certain picture. If we could have had the bigger picture and subtract that from the bigger picture, we might get the real picture of the absence of information. But we don't have the bigger thing to subtract it from. If you get the point. You don't get. I don't get. It. <laughs> oh, you better maybe elaborate there, Fergal. All right. It's a bit theoretical, but you're only able to paint so much of a picture, yes. and there's a bigger picture out there that we can't get the information on. Is essentially what I'm saying. Um, and there's a need to get to the bottom of that information. So as I understand it, what John Bradley was saying is that it's that very information that can allow us to make some strategic decisions about the future of particularly rural border areas. And as I would see it, a lot of the very small. Uh, the sub-regional areas are in and around border areas, so there is a need in my mind, given what you, the good work that you've put in here, it, it, that it actually underscores the need for further interrogation of those sub-regional areas. Yes, because uh, probably in terms of um, some of the cases around like PAYE and stuff like that, not every one of those businesses will be on a database by the Department of Enterprise or Invest NI, because not, not all of them will be clients of theirs. Um, the only people that really will have access to that level of detail will be essentially the taxman, HMRC, uh, that scale. So um, I think as this, this flags up an important part of the picture about inadequacy, shortcomings and everything. Some of that may be down to other government departmental shortcomings, say for example investment in infrastructure. Or uh, we take it over and so come up here, investment in uh, electricity in the grid, which may have a consequential as to, uh, as we heard recently from the chief executive of Deal Farm, consequential in terms of what is retarding development in those areas as well. So th this is good to have this data and this information, and probably given that the, the issue was the catalyst for it was John Bradley's report, and we'll need to share that with him to get his take on it too. Uh, but there's there's a lot of wider questions there as to what's contributing to this this picture. I, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, again, it comes down to the questions you ask and where yes. you want to get to with with, with yeah. the information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even for the things about the use of EU monies for strategic development, investment, all those sorts of things is taking us into that area. Anyway, I have. Um, Thanks for that, Fergal. I have uh, Mr. Flanagan. Phil. Thanks, Pat and Aidan. Thanks for the presentation. Did you find any of this on the Daddy website? No. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you? you? Sorry, what was that? Yeah, did you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, you did? Well yeah. I could. But I, I use yeah. the Daddy website a lot, so. You'd yeah. be one of the 164,000 a year, probably about four or 5,000 of them. You didn't leave a comment <laughs> on it, did you? No. You were one of the no, two no. consultations, no? <laughs> um, how does the um, level of sub regional data here compare with other regions in Europe? 
Good doesn't. question. Um, you want to find out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you've gone for two or three years then. <laughs> we, we'll discuss that later, maybe, in your... Exactly. When you're not here. So it's, it's not something you looked at? It's not something you looked Not even at. in Britain or the South or anything, no? Um, no. no okay. I, I, I was just focused on Northern okay. Ireland and what's there and what's... Well, sorry, I'm just, I'm just wondering, Phil, just on the back of that, uh, given that there's tremendous investment and Objective One uh, funds and the likes of that, there may well be somebody, I would presume, somebody of audit at EU level which looks at that type of stuff, I would have thought. Um, so perhaps if we could establish if that does exist, Aidan. That's no problem. All right, sorry, Phil, go ahead. You're right. Um, Jim had sent you through quite a lengthy um, request um, at the, the start of this process. Have you been fit to get all the information that the committee asked for? No, um, and the, th the elements that were not found are in the discussion section of oh, the paper, which is in front of me. Um, yeah, it starts on page 17, but it was more found than wasn't. Okay. And in terms of, of what couldn't be found, is it that it <coughs> simply doesn't exist or hasn't been collated? It's simply that I couldn't find it in the public domain, I'm not sure. That doesn't mean that it isn't collated behind mm -hmm. the scenes. The, the focus was on what's there, and you can... Will you, will you go into a bit of detail about what you couldn't find, given that you haven't got much detail on it? that's a bit of an anomaly, go into a no. bit of detail about what you can't find. <laughs> you can't find it, there wouldn't be detail. <laughs> um, it's mostly in the, the business and uh, econ economy section. It's things like the data on uh, business spending uh, and academic spending, uh, on research development and innovation at a sub-regional level, um, the export and import data at that level, um, index <coughs> indexes of output, things like production services, construction, the virtual mm -hmm. manager index, uh, labour productivity, uh, which the, the Office of National Statistics collects at the NUTS 3 level for GB, right. but not it, it doesn't have it for here. And um, the government expenditure, um, there's certain elements of that, but it's, I think it's, it's difficult for, for the departments to allocate that expenditure, a lot of some of that expenditure, f to a specific region because of the, the, the nature of it. As far as I need to... Uh, I need to clarify that, that explanation, but there are difficulties in yeah. saying that. And in terms of some of the information, um, is all of it accurate or is some of it estimated? Um, it's Some of it's based on uh, the surveys and, mm -hmm. and samples, and uh, but the, they will... They will uh, have uh, methodologies behind that and, and then established methodologies mm. that fit into to, uh, the ONS practice and, you think and, and certain ones will fit into to the way Europe collects this data as well. Because if, if you look at the thing at statistics like the British Treasury, tell us how much um, households in the north um, pay in VAT. That's the survey of around 200 households in the north, which really can't be that accurate. And I'm wondering whether some of the information you found was based on similarly small surveys. When we're getting into the the that side of it, I, I, I'm, I'm not a, a statistician. There are people in the research team that, that are. That are. Yeah. And I think if, if we wanted to assess the the quality of, of the information, I think it would be something that I'd have to get, okay. get them to look at. Mm -hmm. Um, how big of a, a problem were different levels of, of sub-regions when you were trying to do this? Because there's parliamentary constituencies, there's then district council areas, there's, um, and then there's a couple of other different sub-regions that you've seen. You've seen the west and the south, and you've seen the southwest. You know, does that present a problem for this type of work? It presents a problem in the sense that you can compare those regions on individual in indicators, but when you're getting into some way of creating an, an index, something that looks at 
all of that this data or portions of this data in its in holistically. Mm -hmm. Then you've got two data sets that are two different levels. They can't be directly comparable. Okay. So there are yeah, it, it does create difficulties of comparison. That's it. That's all I have for the minute about it. Right. Thanks for that, Phil. Um, uh, Mrs. Overend, Sandra. Uh, thanks, Chair. <coughs> no, really, I just uh, was just picking up on, on the previous points. Phil, Phil mentioned it. I mean, surely, I wonder, would you be interested in drawing up just brief recommendations for for the new Delhi website as to what what was missing and what uh, what should be there and what you know what what was missing? You know, just a short set of recommendations with that. I wonder would the department find that. If you had. If you had any, you heard the conversation that was going on there yeah. about an antiquated website, you know, pretty basic antiquated. Yeah, I'll if, be, if uh, you had, maybe if you had any issues, um, we're not talking about. Oh no, a I wouldn't spend any. Of, no, I wouldn't spend. Not talking about a considerable body of, of research or anything like that, because let them Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> no, I'm better. just. I was just thinking off the top of your head. I'm sure you could. Th no. Thank yeah, you. I can, yeah, I can, thanks for If you had just one, if you could drop us a mm. short note or something, that'd be, that'd be very helpful. But no, helpful. thanks very much for the information. It's been useful. Okay. Okay. Thanks, thanks Sandra. Um, Mr. Douglas, Sammy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, Sidon, uh, for this presentation. And uh, information um, was very helpful. Now, obviously, some of us had a bit out of date. Some was 2010, mm. 2011 um, census. Is there any way that you can drill down? Let me just give you an example. Um, I think it said that there are 31% of all jobs are in the the, um, the the public sector. Somewhere, at the, I'm not quite sure. Okay, page 30. But things like um, Belfast West, west of the parliamentary constituency um, areas. Had 47 percent. So I assume that the likes of the Royal Hospital um, would be an example of, of that, which creates you know, um, high levels of employment. Sorry, can you see that? It's thirty. Uh, east, south, west. Sorry, I have got. I think I have the pages number. <laughs> number Sorry, it's it's uh, page eight in your research. It's page oh. thirty in our document here. You have to know the number. It's um, just there. Uh, it's the, just the, part, the second paragraph from the bottom there. Mm -hmm. It starts yes, public yes, sector employee so jobs. It's figure, figure two. Okay, yes, sorry. And, and again, it's a bit like um, um, Belfast East, where you would have some of the bigger companies like some Bombardier, even like some Northern Iron Sands Park, Titanic Quarter, where you get creating lots of jobs. But many of those people um, taking up those jobs are from outside East Belfast and Sure BCM oh, right. and West Belfast as well. So is there any way you, you can drill down down then, then Aidan, um, to, I think to look at that? It should be a diffi difficult enough task. Yeah, if you look, the, the problem with, with that is the data that it's based on. Uh, if you look at the, the, the first quote that's just above that, um, the, it's based on the location of job of the job, not the home address of the mm -hmm. employee. Yeah. So, uh, no, I don't. Th based on that, I don't think it's possible. He, he, no. It is. It, it says what it says. Yeah. So, no. big, big task. Yeah. Um, I've just come back to the website. I suppose one of the, the, the difficulties of if you put stuff on the website, you have to update it. The one on D Saturday. So, have you put stuff on now next year or maybe in six months' time? You'd have to update it. So, a bit of a task here. So. Aye. So that you don't get yourself involved. <laughs> Do much work. But again, my thanks for your your presence. Very helpful. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just on that particular point, Sammy, uh, the um, the Quigley report and decentralisation of jobs. You know, public sector jobs. I'm wondering, just Aidan, would it, it have had that or some uh, that that was yeah. the basis of what they were supposed to be dealing with at that time. So if there was, there might have been something useful in that. That could have provided you some detail, at least to you know the number of as referred to the TTWs, travel to work people from outside their their position, or their place of work. It is, it is likely captured in other places. For example, if uh, yes. the, <coughs> the figure five of of Annex Aye, two, it shows civil servants. Uh, it's not the whole public sector, um, but it's just several servants by your home and, home and work location. Wait. So it, it's 
it's obvious from that that the, the majority work in Belfast but don't necessarily no, 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 no. Live, live, live there. I'm sure they did, they're bound to have done some work on this. You know? But, I, I, but anyway, I, I, we can I, get I, that. The, the thing, there, there was a lot of data looked at and yes. it, 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 it tried the best to capture all of it, but I'm sure with, just with the size of the... But since Sammy raised it, if there is something there that you can maybe hook out for us, yep, yes, that, no problem. that'd be yep. grand. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, um, anyone else then? No? OK, thanks very much, Aidan, for, for your work. Again, that's what we, we do with it. So, um, there's been a number of issues raised around investment and the like, so... Uh, in the first instance, it would be helpful, I referred to it earlier there, if we sent this to uh, Dr John Bradley and ask him for, for his comments as to what his take might be on it. <coughs> Members are agreed. Great. What about to the Department on Invest NI as well, to get their take on it? Agreed? Yeah. Okay? Definitely agree. Right, thank you for that. That's it. Yep, Paul. Can we uh, publish a copy of it on the committee website? Oh, and can we send a copy to NICFA, oh. given they're going to publish a review of economic data on, at the end of February, and it might help them feed into their yes. report. And it also might be helpful to send a copy to the um, Economic Advisory Group. Mm -hmm. Of? That's just a name. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought you meant the, exe the executive? Uh, well, I don't know economic if it's the executive nope. body, but it's an economic advisory group that advises data. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yes, yes, I got you. Right. Yep. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the subgroup of the executive, right. I didn't do any harm to send that along to the subgroup of the executive, too. I'd have sent it to the department that's who runs it, if you know what I mean. And we hope. <laughs> oh, OK, you got all that, Jim? Yes. OK, thanks very much. Now, we'll move to agenda item number six, which is matters raising. Um, papers for this uh, begin at page 73. Okay, and um, at page 74 is a letter from the utility regulator um, advising that the committee seek further information requires on the technical, technical abilities and suitability of the tight ends of Enniskill <coughs> and Letterkenny from the system operator for Northern Ireland who has direct control of those. So if we're content enough to do that, agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Um, the next item is the SSE, Air Trusty Northern Ireland Community Fund. It's a response from Fermanagh Trust to the decision by <coughs> SSE Air Trusty to increase their community fund for all newly constructed projects to £5,000 uh, per megawatt. The members content to note this. Should we pass it on to SSE, Potter? Well, I suppose be, we could. Um, Reid, did we do that? Yes. Now, um, next item, uh, program. This is page 107. Um, this is a uh, program for government progress report. And we have a paper there from the department uh, providing information which the committee had requested on quite a scale of information issues. Um, in the programme for government uh, delivery plans to 30th of September 2013. Okay. Um, now, the one thing that I noted was, whenever I was reading this last night, on the particular issue of, uh, from Energy Division on Grid Connection, the Department is aware that this is leading to increased connection costs for small generators due to the need to upgrade lanes to accommodate the generation. Um, I'm not too sure whether it's given us any indication there as to what the department might be doing about this. So if we could maybe seek further clarity on that, what even, rather than stating a fact that they're aware of it, what the thinking is policy ways or other ways within the department about this issue. Can we get a further upgrade from them on that as to what they're thinking or doing or even developing or formulating policy on that? Agreed? No. Yeah, Phil? Patsy, have we ever asked the Department of the Regulator for their assessment as to whether single wind turbines um, provide um, an economic benefit in terms of electricity pricing or whether they would prefer to see um, large wind farms in terms of both meeting the targets and having a downward well, I know that's on electricity we'll, pricing? We'll be discussing that later, Phil, in the Are we doing that draft the report? Review? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. But does that include the... 
renewable electricity targets. Yes, yeah, that's in there as well. It's part of our pricing review. Mm -hmm. There's okay. issues in around that too. So, okay. Um, so agreed that with that one item, we, we note that <coughs> progress report. Um, program for government renewable heat incentive scheme. This is at page one one four. Um, it's a response from the department um, as to whether the department any plans to change the program for government target in relation to the RHI scheme. So you have that at page one one four, and they this very clear answer there come back from the department. So you think that's a clear? Well, it is. Daddy cannot unilaterally change the EFG target. Uh, that doesn't mean they don't have any plans to change the target. Hmm. No, but they cannot unilaterally. They cannot change it on their own, but they can ask the executive right. to change it. They can. Right, so we can go back and reword the question and say, have Daddy any plans to ask the executive to change the target? Sure, I think previously the committee had asked about uh, other targets and they were informed that there were no plans to change yes. any of the PFG targets. That, that, that so. wouldn't be happening. OK, we can obviously come back to it if you, if you, sure. you hear anything in the wind. <laughs> just, yes. just on the renewable heat, I'm trying to find it here, but the uh, the data the department provided and the performance of the renewable heat incentive, they very much compared it you know, with um, GB and yeah. yes. compared very favourably. And there's oh, first no, it's figures. And it seemed to um, uh, it seemed to contradict what I'm hearing from the industry, which is is that the RHI isn't performing well, hasn't been well marketed and, and, and hasn't had a good take up. So I sort of thought, well, how can I marry these two things? And the one thing I noticed the department didn't do was compare from where they should be in terms of meeting the 10% renewable heat target. Mm -hmm. They compared it with GB. Mm -hmm. If GB are doing really bad, we just might be doing badly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but what are you suggesting then, Stephen? Um, it, 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 it's something to note at this point, but uh, maybe just a question back to the department on on sending back um, for a progress report on the RHI, RHI okay. on um, progress in terms of reaching the ten percent renewable heat target by twenty twenty. Okay. And do, do they have we do an okay. interim target? I think there might, there might be something in the RHA in, in the fog work program, and right. I, as far as I remember, there's something somewhere in relation to the, the committee had a query on what the baseline was and where yes. things yes. are at the minute. Yeah, okay. as well. So that so, information is maybe um, in there. Uh, when are we do? When is that's what I was going to say in the forward work program. I'm thinking of when that's coming up now. Uh, was that the one that was from May, Chair? Just. Off the top of my head. Well, we're just getting a, an oral briefing on the RHI in yeah. the second stage. The of members it. want to discuss the injured forward program. Right, we can do that then. So okay. And maybe we can there? establish yeah. just yeah. if. Oh, yeah. Right, we can check that out later. Okay. Um, inquiry into renewable energy. This is a response that's um, page 115. This was a response from the Minister about the um, renewable energy being used in public buildings. And um, now, as you can see, he has outlined there what the responsibility of his department is. Um, I'm just wondering on this, there's a whole load of, of public buildings out there. Mm -hmm. uh, think of health, education, the works. So how we establish at the scale of it, we, we could um, <coughs> We could do it through, I suppose, assembly research, couldn't we? Or uh, we could write directly to the departments ourselves. We previously got a research paper on yeah. renewable energy usage within the public yes. sector state. And it was terrible. I know it was awful. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're on that as well. I'm, no, I would have to go back and check. I've asked a number of AQWs of various government departments mm -hmm. and what they're doing in terms of renewables and they've pretty much come back and says DFP is responsible for public buildings. <laughs> so uh, would it be helpful just if you could share those yes, or we can get them uh, yeah, yeah. Stephen and we'll look at that next week and then that'll probably determine our course of action. Would that be okay? So to just to put this yeah. into context for members, the, this arose I think because members had asked about the level of mm -hmm. uh, renewable energy and what plans yeah. were in, in the public estate, and the response came back that uh, it, it would be done. You know that uh, as and when things needed to be updated, it would be done, and there was no move mm -hmm. to pro proactively change things. So the question then was, how many had been changed in the last mm -hmm. three years? You know, how many uh, mm -hmm. heating systems have been put in either? Uh, in old buildings or in, in new builds, and what proportion of them had been renewable. 
So that only has sort of come back from from DFP, but maybe the same question could then be asked. Uh, we asked the Commission, Jim. The Assembly Commission, oh. yes. Did we ask them? I don't know. No, I don't think so. We only agreed to contact DFP. No, but the, the Assembly Commission in relation to this building? Yeah. It's heat a big gas. There's no room in the estate to store biomass. Sammy Wilson told me when he was the Minister. Mm. Right. Can we well, just um, decide on a course of action here? Uh, Stephen, you're going to provide us with the AQs. Yes, sir. Um, if we can have a look at the AQs and see the level of information that's coming back and what's been said, then perhaps we're in a better informed position, hopefully next week, to decide on our course of action in this matter, if that's, if that's an agreeable way to pursue it. Chair, yes, just, do you remember when the Green Investment Bank was in and they talked about some mm -hmm. sort of schemes or investments that they had uh, available? Yes. And we were wanting to get that information out to government yes. departments as well in case uh, you know, they could uh, partake of those. Um, so maybe just just to remind you of that information. Well, I, and we're yeah. going to deal with that later on. That's good. Okay. Today in the in the uh, in the agenda. So that, as an event ourselves, because they're coming over later on in the year. Yes. So how okay. do we deal with that? We we discuss that um, on on Tuesday. Yes. Sorry, yeah. just quickly. Um, <coughs> within this pu public sector uh, buildings are public acting buildings working together when it comes to the renewable energy. Like, is there anything in this could bring yes. them together that would need to be looked at? Like, you take maybe, say, down my way, yeah, maybe the, the civic centre, the, the buildings, you have the hospital, uh, you have other different things. Why all not maybe being tied in together to try and, if they go forward with a project yes. <coughs> or renewable energy to say, look, uh -huh. is that tied in that something could be looked at? Yes. That, a very good point because you have RPA coming, you have the restructuring of new councils, yeah. all of that stuff. And again, how maybe, for example, DOE would strategically seek to, to point or to encourage them to go that route might be useful as well. So, um, well, can we wait until we get the information next week that, that Stephen has put in by EQs and then we make a decision as to what or how we, we push this forward? Okay, and later the points that have been made. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you for that. Um, right. Um, next item, small scale feed in tariffs. This is page 118. Departmental response uh, to the committee's request as to whether the small scale feed in tariff analysis will be used to inform the proposed energy bill. Well, that has been kicked uh, a good year down the lane, so. I can find out why? No, I haven't. Can we find out why? No. Yeah, we can. So agreed we establish why the energy CFA bill has been uh, delayed. Okay. Unless anyone has anything further to say about this, can we note that response too? Next item is January monitoring round. This is page 119. Departmental response to a uh, request by the committee at the briefing on January monitoring round. Um, members have anything further to add or to request or to note? No. Agreed to note. Next mm -hmm. item, the committee is <coughs> also... Pardon? Which? The uh, special report. Special report. Yeah. 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 The special EU. Yeah, that was part of it. All right, sorry. Just to say that the committee had requested information from the uh, special European Union programme body on the sourcing of EU monies in regard to ring fenced easements and EU internal reallocations mentioned in the January monitoring round. The Department has asked, on receipt of this information, that the Committee forward a copy. So, if we're content to forward that copy, please. Read. Now, next item, uh, Horizon 2020 in the North-South context, um, at the Department's response to a report from Darcy Smith Associates on Horizon 2020 in the North-South context. Now, um, just on this point, I see a lot of it has been referred to FP7 and the likes. Now, if we are content to ask the Department, uh, considering the 80.5 million has been drawn down from North-South collaborative programmes, how much <coughs> excuse me, has been drawn down in Northern Ireland from programmes not involving the South might be useful, and not just under FP7, if we could establish that information, so we agree to go that way. Agreed? Yes. Yep. Uh, next item, draft 
2020 ERDF program consultation. This is at page 125. And it's a summary provided by the Department of Responses to Public Consultation on the Northern Ireland Draft ERDF Programme 2014 to 2020. Unless anyone has anything to raise, can we note those comments? Great. Um, next item is this is interesting an assessment on intelligent energy systems as an alternative to grid strengthening, pages 131 to 136. Responses from the Department. Uh, the Utility Regulator and Northern Ireland Electricity to the Committee's request for uh, comment on intelligent energy systems as an alternative to grid strengthening following the briefing on the Foresight Study into Sustainable Energy. Um, now, if we're first of all can ask members if we're content to forward all three responses to the Sustainable Energy Horizon Panel for information. And um, now, can we copy the NIE and utility regulator comments to the department as well? Because if we look at the department uh, response at paragraph three, they state they are not an alternative to grid strengthening, yet NIE says intelligent energy systems have the potential to reduce the, re the, the need for grid strengthening. And indeed, the utility regulator says undoubtedly intelligent energy systems do have the potential to provide an alternative to grid strengthening. So we have the experts saying they do have the potential to provide an alternative and we have the department saying they're not an alternative. So I think maybe somebody at the department needs to be informed of. But of course mm. you don't know who in, who in the department said it, Patsy? I do not know. It just says it's provided by energy division. So. Somebody perhaps needs to get a wee bit more energy and get down to NIE and to the utility regulator. Learn a wee bit more about these things. Uh, can we do that then? Agreed that we forward this over to the department <coughs> for their consideration, information, and uh, action. Seems a bit bizarre now, but there you go. Stranger things have happened. Agenda item number seven: a written briefing from Detty on the January monitoring round. Now this is page one three seven. Okay, um, and what we have there is um, a gentry monitoring supplementary briefing. If members have any comments on this, no. Read to note then. Agenda item number eight is a written briefing from Detty on um, onshore renewable electricity action plan ORHAP 2013 to 2020. This is a strategic environmental assessment. And the, these papers are at 156. So, um, included in the papers are a post adoption statement. And uh, if members have any comments around this or content to note, agreed to note? Yeah. Yeah. Paddy, should we send it to the Environment Committee given they're doing a, a review of onshore yes, wind farms? Yeah, should we send that over to the Environment Committee? Sure, they, they probably have, but anyway, we'll send it over to them. Um, next item is agenda item, <coughs> excuse me, number nine. That's at page two hundred and ten, and this is in relation to uh, legislation, consumer rights bill, an update from the minister. And um, we have the update. If members mm -hmm. have any comments on this, it appears to be the adoption of a key broad thematic areas around consumer rights, quality of services, and information on the like. So. Um, are we content to note that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. I would be um, interested to know why uh, the Minister wants to hand over responsibility for the draft of Consumer Rights Bill to the Westminster Government. No, let them produce a bill that we don't know what's going to be in it. Should we not be taking much more of an active interest in mm. the drafting up of legislation that, res that's, that the Executive has a, a primary responsibility for? Consumer Affairs is a devolved matter. Should the department not be dealing with that instead of just bringing in a, a legislative consent motion to allow the Westminster government mm. to bring in whatever piece of legislation they want? The existing UK consumer law is unnecessarily complex, fragmented. Well, fair point. We can ask for, for rationale. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Agreed. Who's the boss? Is it, uh, Apologies, Chair. Yeah. Would it be helpful at this time as well to establish if there is any uh, impact on the. Uh, 
the statutory consultation role that the Consumer Council has. Mm, done it, yeah. So that would appear to be maybe a strategic mm -hmm. interest for uh, you know for, for people at government okay. level. Okay, we'll clarify that as well then. Thank you. Right, agreed to do that. Then we move to agenda item number 10, which is consultation on the credit unions and industrial provident societies bill. This is a summary of the consultations, the consultation responses, and these are the papers from 216 onwards. Now we have in those papers uh, copies of responses to the consultation, the department's post-consultation decision following responses, and to find out if the members have any comments on this. Now, Excuse me, obviously we're going to receive the credit unions about other issues uh, later on in, in the year. But um, are we agreed that we accept an oral briefing from the Department on the outcome of the consultation and its proposals? Agreed? Yes? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next item is we move on to correspondence, which is agenda item number 11. So, Jim, yeah, I'll move over to you to take us through the correspondence, please, just. Excellent, Chair. Okay, the first item is from the Department for Employment and Learning, uh, inviting members uh, to attend stakeholder, stakeholder forums uh, that the Minister uh, of Employment and Learning is hosting to inform the Department's ongoing review of youth training. So if members want to contact the committee office if they'd like to attend that. That's at page 473. Yeah. Then at page uh, 475 and 480 from the Chair of the Committee for OFMDFM regarding its recent Delivering Social Change Signature Programmes event, asking for the committee's views on comments raised by stakeholders on the Social Enterprise Incubation Hubs programme. The Department has advised the Committee for OFMDFM that the Social Enterprise Incubation Hubs programme is a matter for the Department uh, of Social Development to comment on. Now, I thought members maybe would want to ask the Department for confirmation of where responsibility for the social economy lies now and how each Department contributes to it and what responsibility Detty and Invest and I have for social enterprise hubs. I think that would be useful because the social economy is an important part of the economy and we are the... So, uh, if we clarify that responsibility, first of all, what the department's doing on it, which will come back to us, and that doesn't preclude us making a comment as a committee on it. Well, you're I, I'm, I'm interested in the, the social enterprise incubation hubs and the location of them because um, the whole purpose of... Um, that particular aspect of the Delivering Social Change Signature Programme was to address um, derelict buildings in deprived communities. Mm -hmm. But if you look at where they've located the one in Enniskill, and it's in a, an, a used new building, not in a, a derelict building at all. So we can we seek some, some clarification from the department as to whether they've set aside the requirement of um, redeveloping derelict buildings? Is this? Department of Enterprise or DSD? It's DSD and Daddy jointly. Yes. Okay, and, and is this specific? The, OF, the OFM DFM criteria stated that it, it either had to be or it should yes. be in derelict buildings. Now, there's no shortage of derelict buildings in Enniskill that they cut it on up and put a social enterprise incubation hub into it, but they chose a building that's already in use at the, the Clinton Centre. That's not one bit derelict or deprived. So I'm interested to know why they decided to put it in function building instead of doing up one of the many deprived buildings in the town. Okay, fair enough point. Okay, agreed. Right, Jim. And if we could have, see if that applies to other incubation hubs in other areas or whether that's just the one in the skin. Just the one off. Okay. Right, Jim. Okay, uh, from the Irish Congress of Trade Unions in relation to the radar consultation. That's page 482. Sorry, it's page 482 if members are content to note that at this stage. Great. And then on page 484 from the Chair of the Petrol Retailers Association, which includes correspondence to the Minister expressing the organisation's views on the ACCC policy move to curb supermarket deep discounting. That's the Australian uh, Department. Yes. Uh, and an invitation to attend their regional forum and a roadshow, which their Chair will be in attendance at. Uh, now, the roadshow is in October, so if members would like a, an invitation, uh, sorry, a, a reminder about that later at the time, contact the committee yes. office, and if uh, they would wish to attend the regional forum, also contact the committee office. They're both Thursdays, I see there, too. You know. mm -hmm. Can you get us an agenda for the regional forum, Jim, and see what, whether it's an afternoon or morning? Aye. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, from the Committee of uh, Finance and Personnel in respect of post-project evaluations, uh, it is something that comes up regularly. So if, if members want to forward it to the Department to ascertain the reasons for the delays in completing those uh, yes. post-project evaluations that are delayed. Oddly enough, I see one of the IT there, given what we heard this morning. So, Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, then an invitation to the Deputy Chair to a two-day event entitled Cross-Border Economic Development and the Border Development Zone Concept, which is being organised by the Centre for Cross-Border Studies at the International Centre for Local and Regional Development. Uh, maybe Deputy Chair wants to speak on this? Not really, Jim. I can't go, so I thought I'd bring it to the attention of the committee to see if um, we could maybe send Aidan to, to bring back a report to the committee, because it's pertinent to that um, information on sub-regional data is after giving us. Yes. Okay. Read. Read. Uh, from the Minister regarding her consent to make regulations to revoke the gas transit regulations 1992 mm -hmm. at page 512. Do members have any comments on that? Well, Are members content with the proposals? Read. Right. Uh, from the Committee for Employment and Learning, inviting the committee to join them on their visit to the University of Ulster, Coleraine Campus and Seagate Technologies on Wednesday the 30th of April. So again, if members, that's on page 514. If members contact the committee office if they wish to attend that. Great. Great. From the Committee uh, for Education regarding its STEM is Cool event. It's a stakeholder event to be held here in Parliament Buildings on the 29th of January. Uh, this was emailed to members before recess to allow sufficient notice. It's on page 515. Uh, I think the chair had an initially agreed. Uh, you can't. I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether I can attend this. So, in, in case I can't attend, Phil, are you about that day? We cool you down, Phil. Well, then it's a Monday or two, is it not? It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Oh, be about that. It's to <coughs> participate in a panel discussion. Okay. <coughs> Either or so. I wouldn't miss the way to cool, them down, cool the event down. Getting flowers. Send you over. <laughs> You're right. Don't start raising double now. STEM is cool. <laughs> it's cool. Okay. Right. The next one is uh, page. 518, right, Jim. So from the Committee for the Environment regarding its inquiry into wind energy. As if members are content to inform the Committee for the Environment that this Committee's current review of electricity pricing will consider the impact of wind energy incentives on <coughs> pricing and suggest that they contact the Fermanagh Trust in relation to community benefits from wind energy developments. I think it's very so, topical and opportune that they're doing this at the moment because it is, renewables is becoming quite contentious. Um, in some geographical locations, you know, so it, it's very opportune they're doing this. Okay, great then. Agreed. Uh, from the Committee for Finance and Personnel regarding the 2015 16 budget process. Happy Europe, then. Uh, so, if members are content <coughs> to forward it to the Department to arrange an oral briefing at the appropriate time. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from the Committee for, the, for OFM DFM. Uh, regarding the European Commission work programme for 2014. Again, if members are content to forward that to the Department to consider its priorities in relation to the work programme. That's at 536, page 536. Okay. And from the Quarry Products Association uh, regarding its response to the European Commission in relation to the investigation into certain aggregates levy exemptions. So if members are content to note that. Yeah. Does, Gordon, does Gordon want us to contact the European Commission supporting the Acquired Product Producers Association? Are <laughs> you in the whole thing? Because I know he's looking for ministers yeah, to do it. Uh, I know I was talking on their day party, they said they never mentioned it now, but uh, we'll maybe just, we can just check if they want that we can put that item of correspondence on hold till next week because obviously we'd, we'd want to be as supportive as we could to the, yeah. to the quarry producers, you know? Mm. Okay, and we can just establish, Jim, then, if they want better support. Okay. Yeah. Great, then. Next item, page 599. Hey. You're from the Northern Ireland Assembly Business Trust inviting members to an educational visit, visit to a passive house. 
When, when is that? Uh, Thursday, the 30th of January. There's a lot of stuff coming up that day. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in that, are you, Phil? I might be uh, not going, you know. I'm seeing if right. Gordon and Stephen's going to represent maybe in North Down Main, you know. I know. Um, I, I would I would be particularly interested in seeing that mm -hmm. um, because it's a big new item and uh, yeah. has been discussed at other this is where, where I've been, but I would like to see one in operation. So, mm -hmm. if, if you could put me down for that subject to my availability, just Jim, please. And anyone else that wants to attend. Virgil, do you want to go? Virgil, are you, you indicating there? No? Yes, I have put an interest, yeah. Right. Is that my name for as well, Chair? Because I, I would be under Sammy. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're not going, Phil, no. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. It'll be too, to too quiet for you. It's a passive house. I'm holding out yeah. to give myself a big rope. Okay. Yeah. Passive house would be good for you. And then if members are content to throw the remaining items of correspondence. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <coughs> okay. Now, then we move to agenda item number 12. And if we move to, that's page 612, the forward work programme. And the number of issues that we, we discussed, well, we discussed all of these on Tuesday anyway, so it's more or less a matter of formally endorsing it here today. So um, it was suggested that the planning meeting on Tuesday passed to hold the 6th of March meeting. Um, sorry, wait a minute here. Angela has an uh, amended uh, schedule for me here, just Okay. Where, here we are. Right. Uh, to hold a meeting at the Northern Ireland Saints Park on the 13th of February and visit the SS Nomadic afterwards. If uh, members are content to arrange external catering at the Saints Park, the room is being provided free of charge and is booked until 1pm. Read, yes? Yeah, that'll be a committee meeting, yeah. Aye. Uh -huh. Yeah, plus Aye. a tour and so on. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And lunch. Yeah, lunch. We have been there before, some years ago. We did start on Two years ago, <coughs> So it is interesting, I think it is worthwhile. It would be. Um, next item is to hold a stakeholder event with Fermanagh Trust on the 18th of February. If members are content to specifically invite members of the Committee for the Environment, the Committee for Agriculture and Rural Development to attend the event, as well as representatives from DETI, DOE and DARD, and to inform all MLAs who may be interested in attending that the event has taken place. Okay. That's so, a, in a, a response to a... a a question I asked the Agriculture Minister, she said that DARD have appointed a, a wind farm development manager within it's been seconded from SIB to Forest Service, so it might right. be worthwhile inviting that individual to attend as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, content to invite stakeholders from across Northern Ireland to attend, a list of stakeholders will be included in the papers at next week's meeting with, with the addendum there of, of the, the person from DARD. Um, Chair, so what date is that on, Chair? That's the uh, 18th of February, Gordon. A Monday, is it? Tuesday. 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 What time? Yeah. What's the time for that? Oh, lunchtime. Time, time for it. Uh, uh, probably be, I think, around uh, 11 o'clock or so, uh, right. followed by lunch. Okay. Uh, next item is to hold the 6th of March meeting in Newry and receive oral evidence from Newry Local Enterprise Agency. Okay. Uh, next, read. Next item is to visit the Cube in Dungannon and other social enterprises in the area on the 20th of March. Read. Read. Next item was to hold an informal meeting with the Erectus Committee for Enterprise Jobs and Innovation in Parliament Buildings. Read. And that's subject to the agenda as we agreed on Tuesday. Just we worked through. What does an uh, informal meeting mean, Patrick? Beforehand. <laughs> well, I suppose we can't have a formal <laughs> meeting with them. Why? Oh, sorry, I mean formal in the sense of a scrutiny meeting. Right. You know? But informal will still mean there'll be it's a meeting yeah. or stuff like that. Oh, right. OK. Uh-huh. Um, and then the other item which came up was to contact the chair of the Erectus Committee for Foreign Affairs and Trade to explore areas of common interest. Read. Next item is to hold the stakeholder event with the Green Investment Bank and representatives from appropriate government departments, the renewable energy representative bodies and business representative bodies. And the, um, the Long Gallery has now been booked for the 10th of June until 1 p.m. for this. So would members please, please put that one in their diary. That's the 10th of June. 
1 p.m. to be an investment bank. Okay, great. Great. To write to the department uh, to follow up on the committee's previous request for further information regarding the report by Dr. John Bradley and Professor Michael Best on cross border economic renewal, uh, regional, rethinking regional policy in Ireland. Now, this was, it seems to have lapsed that one, by the way. Do you want to say anything further on that one, Jim? No, Chair, it's something that it was actually before the summer that the committee had requested this. Uh, it hasn't come back from the department yet, so it's just a matter of, of uh, mm -hmm. ensuring that, that that comes to the committee right. as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and agreed then, and to receive a pre-legislation oral briefing from the department on the credit union bill, which we agreed earlier, and also for the briefings from the Irish League of Credit Unions and Ulster Federation of Credit Unions. Agreed? And then members had agreed previously to receive an oral briefing from the CBI on their infrastructure report. And if members are content that we get an oral briefing from CBI scheduled between now and Easter. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. And uh, members are obviously Actually, content of going. Yes, Phil? Um, I had proposed that we did a, um, an event. But the CBI, instead of a, a presentation session, would that be something that might work better and we could invite other MLAs and maybe members of the Business Trust to attend as well? I, well, what are members feeling? Well, what, what is in relation to that? Just... CBI did a report on infrastructure, All right. um, on how they think, what changes the executive and, and probably the London government could make to speed up infrastructure projects. And instead of getting them in here to present us, it might be better to have an event in Parliament buildings to... Get there. Right. Well, you, go, you open the event and then someone in the CBA presents and then they take questions and answers from everybody that's there. Well, reasonable, yeah. Read then. Great. Read, yeah. Thank you. Um, just on the, the, the pips, can I mention my favourite one? North North I Island. thought it was a great North Down one. Is there not a, at least a, a month that we could you, aim for? You've noticed the pod for not here and you're going to push it move, <laughs> Can we move right out there to June? Is, there, is it pencilled in somewhere, Charlie? Easter week, I think we said we were going to North Stone. I know we had, uh, to be fair, we had, we had, we had uh, discussed it on Tuesday there. Agreed it, I thought. Aye, we had. No, we had, aye. <coughs> what? It's not there. <coughs> What's not there? What's the proposal, Gordon? Right. Great, Jim. Suggestion. Suggestion. Here we go. No, if, if the committee is going to be undertaking an inquiry into the sub-regional stuff, as, as was mentioned at the, the planning meeting on Tuesday, I, I would imagine members would want to get out to, this, uh, to a number of local enterprise agencies and, and that sort of thing, and to visit uh, businesses, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and indeed councils, mm -hmm. when, when they're looking at this to see what they can do. And that might be an opportunity to, to, to go and, and, as Gordon suggested, have have a meeting maybe in uh, in North Down. So uh, what, what sort of time frame? I want to tie this one down because this one has been, to be fair to you, Gordon, this one has been knocking about for too long. Uh, we just want to tie it down, and we did discuss it on Tuesday. Um, what sort of time frame would you be looking at, Jim, for that? Well, if, if, if the committee were going to do an inquiry, the the inquiry would probably be sending out a call for evidence over the summer and starting taking taking evidence in September. Right. All right, Gordon. That's it, right. Chair. I thought we had agreed we would have had it in before the summer. Patsy, did you see the 6th of February we're taking evidence from the Chamber of Commerce on the North's export base? Mm -hmm. North down, but if we could export base, would we do it that day, no? 6th of February. 6th of February, yeah. I see there's one oral briefing down there. Probably could fit another one in from whatever business we're going to, along with Anne McGregor from Chamber of Commerce. Possible, yeah. your hands here. Pardon? It's Are you enough time there, Jim, to organise that? No, it's too short. It's in terms in terms of the the time between now and, and the sixth of February, yes, it, it could be. But in terms of the resource to do it, it's going to be very tight because there's a lot of of things to be organised between now and then. I must say I'm disappointed, Chair. No, well, I said no, it was agreed. I I'm, not, it was agreed. Um, I'm not dropping it here, no. Gordon. Um, what resources, Chairman, are needed here? You know, what, what is the extra big effort 
I, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I, I don't get what the problem is. Well, no, but is there? The, I know. No, they don't. No, maybe if there is, we'll, we'll maybe discuss this in closed session. The, the resource issue, if we can, after a while, because um, I don't know. There's a pilot project been engaged within the assembly, and if that's creating issues around resources, then we need to know about it. Um, so, can we park that bit till later on? The big that, that, right, that, okay, that sure. resources, but in terms of tying down um, when when we're going to do this, uh, the forward work program. Have we look at it there, Gordon and Jim? When are the opportunities and openings for that there? Because it was the further garden we had agreed to do this. You know? That's the point, Chair. If it was agreed uh, with our, our meeting on Tuesday, oh, everyone was. I would, well, we had given. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's, that's the point, I think. Mm -hmm. There'll be an opportunity there that you can see in the next uh, month or two there. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a meeting arranged outside Parliament Buildings on the 13th of February on the 6th of March. A, an event on the 20th of March. A, so, I, I suppose one of the two meetings in April the 3rd or April the 10th, right. a, maybe a couple of staff to right. Right. right, April the 3rd or April the 10th, what, what do members feel? I want to tie this one down. What about the 27th of February, but sir? Or are you trying to get the review out of the way, Jim? Is that what's right. your whole time? That's, that's one of the things. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of work to get done on that. And when do you think uh, that will be done by? I, I was... Do you want it by the end of March, maybe? I was sort of hoping to have it done by the end of February. Okay. Right. Right. Yep, we'll be, we'll be reasonable. Chair, sure, give me a chance to... <laughs> Long before the 22nd of May. <laughs> Long before the 22nd of May, Gordon's happy enough. Well, I haven't got a date yet, so when I get a date, I'll be able to... to we know the date of the election, anyway. Yeah. That has to right. be before that. Hold on a minute here. Can we get these dates? Am I right enough? I'm not available. <laughs> <laughs> the 3rd or the 10th exactly. of April. <laughs> right, the issues are on the 3rd of April, EU programme for the competitive, for competitiveness of enterprise and SMEs. Very good. It's an SME we can go to to get him funding, European funding, so well, it's all relevant. Put it in around that. That's the 3rd. 3rd of April. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. That's OK. Thanks, Chair. You're right, Gordon. I hope you're able to find it, please. And my apologies. Oh, well, now, hey, don't tell me it's not in the set now. <laughs> we heard enough about the, the department and its websites there. Put, put, it up, put them up, up on your website, Gordon. We'll do that. OK, so we're going to end then with the forward work programme as amended to be published on the committee pages of the Assembly website. Yeah. Great. 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 Um, any other items of business before we move into the closed session? No additional items of business then? Chair, can I just... Uh, can we write a letter, please, to Talis UK, who have just secured a contract with the MOD, a £100 million contract with the Ind Indonesia MOD? to supply missiles. It, it affects, secures 500 jobs right. in East Belfast and in, in South Down. Both of their sites are um, employ people from right across the two communities. I think it would be very fitting to send a letter to the management congratulating them on winning this order. OK. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Get time and place of next meeting. Uh, Thursday, the 23rd of January, room 30, Parliament Building, 10 a.m. And now we're moving into closed session to discuss the next item of business. Committee room 30.